day, this is Gary with Cubase Academy, and I'm going to be starting this series on Halion 5. It's an instrument made by Steinberg that is really quite amazing. It's part sampler, part synthesizer, and uh, it's so deep. It's a great sound design tool. And so I thought I'd do a series on uh, this instrument because uh, it's quite complex and very, very interesting, I think. Uh, it's, it's an upgrade from Halion Sonic 2, uh, which in itself is an upgrade from Halion Sonic SE, which is the free version that comes with Cubase. Uh, it's definitely worth the purchase price, and I hope that if you're interested uh, in buying it, you know, these videos will help you make up your mind, and if you already own it, these videos will help you get the most out of it. Anyway, I'm going to start off fairly simply today, just talking about window structure and some of the paradigms uh, inside of Halion 5 when it comes to managing your windows. So when you first load Halion 5, you uh, see multiple different sections of the screen it's broken up. And by the way, I'm running this as a standalone instrument. It also will run as a VST inside your digital audio workstation. But today, just for simplicity, I'm going to run it standalone. And the only difference you'll see on the screen is this very top bar here has a few different options. It has a transport bar, metronome, and some uh, things you have to, to be able to set your, uh, your ACO device, your, your IO, and your MIDI input device. So you need that. Uh, when you run it inside your DAW, then the DAW will take care of those functions for you. So when you first load Halion 5, this is the default view uh, out of the box, and you'll see that it's broken up into um, the slot rack. Uh, and notice that when I click on a window, the blue outline means it's the active window. We have this uh, center window, which currently is set to media bay. Uh, and all instrument sets here. I'll just clear out the filter. <clears throat> so right now uh, it's load from the media bay. Those are, that's the active window state. Over here we have the program, which is a deep dive into your sounds. More about that later. That's, this is this can be quite an interesting and complex view. Down here we have the history. Uh, excuse me, the program table and the history. Uh, we can undo and redo from this window. Uh, table will store programs until you're ready to activate them over into the slot rack. So you could store, uh, you know, 10, 20 programs in here and switch out whichever programs you're using over here live. And you can preload them. So if you're playing live and you issue a MIDI program change, your sounds are ready instantly. It's very good for live. Um, you can see that I have uh, some trigger pads, uh, some controllers, and a keyboard down here, complete with. Uh, modulation and pitch bend. And uh, so those are the basic windows when, that you'll see when you uh, fire it up. And of course, the windows are adjustable uh, in size. First of all, that's important. You can uh, change how things look, depending on how much room you need. Uh, and windows are uh, either they're standalone windows. Sometimes they're tabbed windows like this. So this is a tabbed window. So we can see multiple views of things. Now I don't have any instruments loaded, so the views are going to be limited here. They're going to be empty mostly. We'll talk about all of these in, in future series. Notice I can add a tab whenever I like. So let's suppose I'd rather see the history table here. I could just hit the tab. I have to select a view. We'll go into all of these, but I'm going to see undo for history. And now the undo history window is another tab at the end of this row of tabs. If I don't like it, I can right click and choose close. That tab will go away, just the tab. Also notice that in every single window section, you have a little tiny drop down arrow. That allows you to split the window even further. So for example, in this window here, if I wanted to split it, I can split it vertically, notice the line, or horizontally, notice the line. I could also undock it or create a tab, which is just like clicking the plus icon as I did earlier. So if I want to split this, say, vertically, 
And maybe in the vertical view now, I would like to see my history. Then I just click Undo History, and now I have this window here. So as I start to do things like load instruments in, oops, there we go. You can see uh, things will start to populate in the history. So I just loaded an instrument into slot one. And notice all I'm doing is clicking and dragging into the uh, space here. And now I've got another load event. If I click and drag right onto one of these events, it, can, it will overwrite. Actually, I don't know. Oh, that's because this is a drum set. This belongs to um, an instrument that doesn't work in. What I should do is just click my plugins here and say, I just want to do Halion 5, Halion Sonic, Halion SE, Dark Planet, Hypnotic Dance, and Tribe Walk. Those will all work inside of this program. Uh, so now, uh, if I drag, drag, drag one of these, notice it turns red. I'm going to replace it. So these are all slots for instruments. I can put 64 instruments into the 64 slots into this uh, tool. Uh, that's a lot of sounds. Uh, and, and I just want you to notice that as I drag them in here, they're also being loaded in here into the program table. And next, and notice in the program table that I've got a number here, one. It's telling me that each one of these programs is being used once in the slot rack. That's kind of cool because I could take, say, this sound here and drag it again into the slot rack. Now I've got two of them, and it says here it's being used twice. Why? Well, because I may want to go in and, say, maybe change the parameters, change the panning of each one, change other parameters, which we'll get into later. Uh, and notice that as we do this, the history t the history table is growing. Uh, if I decide that it was just a bad idea, I will simply just um, click the last action I want to keep, and there, all those actions are undone. It's pretty handy. So the history table, um, I split the window and put a history table in. I could also uh, make it its own standalone window. So if I say undock. Now I could keep the history window on a separate monitor. Uh, or, uh, and then, of course, if I do that, I don't need it here. So I could close it here. And I don't need it here either. So if I really wanted to, I could close just this tab and see. Well, of course, I closed the wrong one, didn't I? So um, <laughs> I would have to split this window again or add a tab, excuse me, create a tab and put in what was there, which was the program table and then close the history tab <laughs> there. So again, example of adding, uh, splitting the window or adding a tab, nice. But as you can imagine, it's pretty easy. I could drag and drop this table. Uh, I can move these tables around. Let's drag this one over here. Uh, and uh, oh, it went into my, let me close that. Let's drag this uh, into here and drag this into here. And pretty soon, um, we have a really kind of screwy looking, uh, oh, oops, now it's a disaster. So what I can do is I, here's my saving grace right here. I can go right back to my default view. No, it was saved, not maximized, but I can just maximize it. Now I'm back to where I started. Uh, I have other options. I could go to the basic view, which is very small, just a condensed version. Or I could look at uh, the advanced view, which is kind of, it's, it's what we've been using. It's what we're also calling basic. But you can make your own. You can save screen sets. So if I want to look at minimized and editors, you can see it's split out here into two windows. So any screen set, and it works across multiple monitors, you can save. Yes, it's going to save you a lot of time um, and, in, and increase your workflow. And that's always important. When you're working in these tools, you want your workflow to be as smooth as possible. So that's all I'm going to get into today is the paradigm of Windows in Halion 5, how you can customize them to uh, increase your workflow and see the information you need to see. As always, uh, please, if you like this video, please give it a like and uh, comment if you want to see anything specific about Halion 5. 
and uh, share it amongst your Cubase-loving friends. Thank you very much. See you next time.